welcome to Clothing Culture. I'm Emily Lane. I'm Brett Schnetker. We speak with experts where we explore the global dynamics that shape trends in the fashion industry. Brought to you by Stars Design Group, a global production and design house with over 30 years of industry experience. Welcome back to another episode of Clothing Culture. Today, we are going to be talking with Lula Mena and exploring the conversation of shifting a culture through fashion. Brett, are you excited? I am. (laughs) I mean, I can't believe it's been a year since we've been to El Salvador. I know. What a journey it's been. Absolutely. Journey to nowhere. (laughs) with COVID for this last year. We definitely had a wonderful journey to El Salvador on behalf of the CLDP program to help foster relationships and mentor companies in the textile and apparel industry in El Salvador. And we've had a lot of time over the last year developing relationships uh, within that program. And Lula has absolutely been one of those and absolutely my personal favorite. <laughs> I think everyone on the trip's personal favorite. Yeah, Brett, sure. share a little background about how we, you know, our experience in becoming introduced to to Lula Mena's amazing company. And then our, Lula, we want to, of course, welcome you to the conversation. Yeah, certainly. I think that, you know, for a long time, the United States government has really worked to establish trade with our neighbors. And, you know, as part of CAFTA DR, There's a big incentive, a duty-free incentive to grow neighboring nations and the business between them. Honduras, Guatemala um, have really leapfrogged in the apparel sector. And El Salvador seemed to be kind of lagging behind, you know, previous governments didn't really believe in apparel. They really, or accessories or, Mm -hmm. you know, those type of things. They really hoped they could leapfrog into technology. So there wasn't a lot of investment in El Salvador. And so I think, you know, the trip was for a group of experts, quote, I Mm -hmm. guess, uh, all of us, people that have been around, made tons of mistakes in our past, uh, hopefully can, you know, understand the lay of the land there and have some, you know, healthy dialogue to hopefully bring El Salvador, uh, you know, more in line with their neighboring nations uh, in terms of apparel production and and related items like Lula Mena doing mm-hmm. a lot of amazing things down there. Yeah, so we we spent a week traveling around and b- visiting all different you know businesses of shapes and sizes in this space and uh, being shuffled around on a bus and that was exciting. Treacherously early Handlers, mornings, <laughs> early morning, no leg room. That's right. Yeah. And towards the end of the trip, we we had the highlight, and that was walking into Lula, your boutique, which was this just ray of light and peace and just this really extraordinary experience. It just, after getting to know you over the last year, it seems that it represents you so well. So welcome to this conversation. Thank you, Emily and Beth, for having me here. It's a pleasure. Uh, it all begins when, when I became a mother, actually. I, I It was the most beautiful thing that happened to me in my life. I, I never felt that kind of love before. It was like a, an amazing thing that was happening in my, in my life. But at the same time, I realized that I was, it's a huge responsibility to have, um, to have a human being that, that, that's depending on you and that everything that, it, that you're going to, to, to say or to give or all the love that you're going to give that, that, children is is going to be the foundation of of a human being you know and realizing that and knowing that all the the majority of the women in the rural areas of my country uh, did not have the opportunity to raise their children because if they want an opportunity a, a work opportunity they have to migrate to a city or they have to migrate to a states in a lot of cases uh, I was aware of that and I I wanted to to really give them the same opportunity that I was having as a mother to be with my children. Uh, And I, I, what what I created was Lula Mena, uh, where we 
What I do in Lula Mena is that I, I train the women in the rural communities how to, to work with the products or the materials that they have around. I design the product, I develop them, I train them on how to do our designs, and then uh, we, we sell those products in the national and international market. And in that way, we are able to give them a steady job that, that really helps them to improve their lives. And you have a much bigger family now. I, All of these women, the entire, uh, I, I, walking through and seeing the story and what you've put together, I mean, every one of us, I think, was profoundly impacted by what you've done. I mean, you, you see it in, in everything that you create, this care and this community. I mean, it's more like family, I suppose. You know, I think, I, you know, one of the things that we talked about, and this was maybe a few weeks ago, and it's been continuous through COVID is just all the challenges that you're dealing with a little bit and what you're doing to continue your efforts with these with this family, extended family that you've developed uh, at Lulamena. It, it has been a very challenging time as for everyone, you know, but uh, as, as you're saying, we're kind of like a family because before having any kind of relations or any kind of production, we have to have a relationship. Hmm. And, we, and it's like um, we have to trust each other, you know, that when, when, when you work with communities uh, of artisans or with women, uh, for me, it's very important to really trust. Uh, it's the first thing that we have to have. And and based on that, you really get to know the other per, the other uh, the other persons, you know, and 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 you became family, as you're saying. And mm -hmm. it, in these times of COVID, the most important thing that we we really can rescue, or we really can can uh, we really uh, have been holding on, is that communication between the women and in the rural communities and and us in the city, you know, because that supports. Support is everything. In a lot of cases, we weren't able to reach them because we were like closed for eight months and, and that was really hard. We weren't able to bring them the materials or to still train in them. But the connection that we have is so strong and, and we have built this beautiful relationship during the years that, that has helped us still continuing the relationship and, and finding out new ways of of going on and, and continue doing the best what we can do with what we have and where we are and in, the, in any situation that, 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 that comes along, you know. One of the things that impressed me so uh, just upon the first introduction of, uh, of, your, of your work, um, we watched some of your videos and, and one of them uh, interviewed some of the women that uh, have experienced complete change in their lives because of the opportunity that that you've you've provided for them and i appreciate so much you know especially in a country where you you know there's there's challenges in every country and certainly el salvador as we've talked about has had has had some and you know opportunity for women is even more difficult and here you've created something that you know, has really culturally shifted the dynamic for women there because for the first time in history, they're becoming the primary financial providers in these in these households. They're the ones that are buying homes and helping to make sure that their kids are going to school. And what what a shift. And I think it extends further than that when you really think about some of these fundamentals uh, business principles that Lulamine is putting out, you know, we look to, you know, in running our organization, you know, you look at Lula and you say, my God, these thought processes, what she thinks about in those relationships. You know, when we've, you know, in the U.S., we've been trained culturally that it's, you know, about the business and employees are a number. And, you know, we've tried to eliminate that within the organization here. I feel like we've got a big family, but, you know, you look at what Lula has done in that country and you look at what she's doing today, you know, through challenging times and the point that she's made this whole trust, mm -hmm. you know, the trust between, you know, her family and herself in this, in this community of artisans. It's a pretty amazing thing. And I think, you know, worldwide companies should take note because, you know, let's not underplay 
what's coming out of Lula Mena. I mean, this isn't, you know, I've traveled the world, I've seen handicrafts, I've been to Haiti, and there's wonderful projects going on where people are pulling people into the community and doing some wonderful things. You walk into Lula Mena, Lula Mena, Lula Mena could be at any shop or place in the world and you would walk in and your mouth would drop. It's the quality of the product, the aesthetic level, is amazing. And, you know, when you look at brands today and you go, okay, let's check the boxes, right? Uh, aesthetic, uh, check. Mm -hmm. You know, quality, check. Social care, check. Mm -hmm. You know, you go down this list and then you add damn sustainability <laughs> when yeah. you start to hear about it. I think, Lulu, we should talk about some of your collections, you know, that you've had this weaving hope and waves of hope and what you've utilized, you know, using traditional... Uh, weaving, uh, you know, uh, machines in the country. Uh, I'm going to shut up because I want to. I want the, you know, the <laughs> audience to hear from you. But you know, we were just astounded. I mean, as we were draping tons of things over our <laughs> arms to buy in your shop to bring home, we yeah. were just astounded at the level of, of yeah. skill and she's, she's talent and beauty. She's combined these artisanal techniques with innovation. And so, yes, let, tell us a little bit about maybe one of your first collections that started to embrace this sustainable materials and how, how you know, what led you down that path? The first, like, uh, sustainable project that we developed was uh, for this the, the energy company here in El Salvador, they were uninstalling 60,000 energy meters. And that was a lot of waste materials, mm -hmm. electric materials. They used to pay the, a company here to, to recollect it and throw it away. And so we proposed them a project in which we were using the, that material, the copper threads uh, from the energy, the old energy meters. But also my interest was not just to use that material, but to also uh, con uh, make some or contribute to to rescue a little bit the, the traditional techniques in my country because that's that's one of my principles. So I proposed them that we were training women on how to do um, the hand looms with the copper wire, and and it was amazing because uh, we achieved it was a win-win situation for all the people involved we as a designer i had a very beautiful material that is the copper wire uh, we were able to train for one year uh, a community of women on how to do traditional weaving that that traditionally here is just made by men so we were giving them the women an opportunity to have a, a job in something that they are were not used to have. Uh, we were developing uh, job opportunities. We were uh, able to to really rescue and have new and young people learn the traditional techniques, and with that to continue with the tradition in in a long way. Uh, we it, it was a really beautiful, beautiful project. Also. Uh, through uh, through developing all the copper collections, we were able to to participate and to show a uh, face of El Salvador in international trade fairs. In the, uh, we were finalists in design contests around like international design contests. It was a really, really beautiful project and it has um, such a big social impact also, uh, not, just, uh, not just the cultural part, but to, also to, to give them that opportunity to be able to have a steady job through this project. They were really able to, to improve their lives and to become more in, independent in their communities. And the women that work in that project really now have like a, a voice and, and they are visible where, where they live, you know, and they can, can now uh, be like a, a, a really beautiful and 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 so and a way to go for the new generations you know in in the community mm -hmm. but i i want to add something emily and brad before uh, talking just about this collection that that is something really important for me and, and that has worked very well is because i really have very clear why i do what i do and having mm -hmm. those five principles uh 
like really, really present every time, every decision, every day in my life, it has helped me develop all these projects. Because for me, it's very important to have everything handmade. That is one of my principles. And that's because, uh, as I was telling you, the traditional techniques are really important because they are part of, of who we are as, mm -hmm. as a country. And for me, that is really, really important. Uh, also, everything is eco-friendly because the, the materials that we use uh, are natural or reused as the copper wire that I was mentioned, or the... Upcycling is the cool new term here. Yes. Yeah. yes. We, and because, uh, and in a lot of cases, we don't have any raw materials around. In, in that case, what I do is is to see, to see w what are the waste materials that the, the community is having. Like the fish girls and the, the group of women that lives near the beach, that was the, the waste materials that they have. Uh, and then also all the processes that we use do not harm the environment. We use very, very low uh, quantities of water and electricity. The packaging is very important for us. And we also train the communities on how to do, uh, on how to use the natural resources in a very um, conscious way, you know. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, everything is, is made to empower women because... As I was telling you, it, it was because I, it, that's the why I do everything, what I do. It's to really, to really impact the life of the, of the children. And, and if the way that I can do it is giving their mothers a way of living, a way of improving their lives, and through that, impacting the life of their children and their communities. And everything that I do, I do it under fair trade conditions because for me, it's not it's it's important for them not not just to survive from what they are doing, but really that they can can improve their lives. They, mm -hmm. they, they can they thrive earn four or three times more of their of what their husbands earn in the rural country, and that make them the 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 main providers of their lives and allow them to take really important decisions in their lives, and that that's really beautiful. And of course, innovation is our fifth principle because through design, innovation through design, that's the way uh, that I am able to, to develop or to have all the other four principles. Uh, because if you really like the product and if they can really uh, be in any shop, as, as, you were as you were saying, Brett, thank Anywhere you. Anywhere in the world. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's the only way because the people it's going to buy my products because you like them not because they yeah. have all the added value the all the other added values you know yeah so, i think what's amazing is when you when you hear lula talk about this brand stewardship that she has you know the word that comes to my mind is transformation she transforms one object into another amazing object mm -hmm. she transforms people's lives mm -hmm. you know Lula Mena is transformation. And I think that a lot of businesses can really learn from Lula, you know, new entrepreneurs. We talk about brand stewardship. We talk about aligning goals and keeping in with those certain guardrails. And you can be creative and have these kind of, you know, focused goals at the same time. Yeah, we, we have talked a lot about, you know, those fundamentals in a business plan, understanding your brand vision and your mission and staying true to that. And Lula, you've certainly, you've done that from the beginning and continue to do so while innovating along the way. And I think that that is a really special thing. I, I love how one of your principles honors the traditions of El Salvador. You have El Salvadorian pride. And um, as you should, it's a beautiful country. The people are, we've, we've talked often about how much we've loved everyone that we met there. And, and, you know, you are finding a way to, you know, kind of find these precious materials that not everybody realizes is precious, like the fish scales. What you've done with using fish scales and turning them into work of art. I love showing people your <laughs> earrings because I'm like, what do you think it is? And they're mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't know, seeds, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I say fish scales and the looks I get. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, what? It's is pretty. that serious? I mean, it's, the world is a fascinating place. Being yeah. all over the world and seeing what artisans are doing with raw materials close to, you know, their hearts and close to their cultures. Um, you know, it's such a great journey, but I got to tell you, uh, this is the first time I've seen such amazing things 
built from fish scales. You're wearing those today, yeah. I think, Lula, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. What Two I... very large fish on either <laughs> ear. <laughs> what I you know, have to ask is, you know, talking about some of those artisanal techniques and traditions that are that are a part of the heritage of El Salvador. I'd love to learn more about some of those some of those core traditions. We're familiar with indigo mm -hmm. um, being a part of the a resource of the country and um, a technique that is is practiced there. Can you share some other traditions that you're that you love and are seeking to preserve and and weave into your designs? No play on words weaving into. I right? mean, there was a play you on words. You did play on words, <laughs> of course. <laughs> And speaking about indigo, I was the first six time of my career after I graduated from school uh, from the university. I worked in the national and the, in a national and the reactivation of the indigo crop here in El Salvador. Uh, indigo was a really huge and important part for us during the colony times. Before the coffee, we used to be that that was our main export product and. We lost, it was like a dead tradition here. And uh, my, in my first job, I had the opportunity to, to work on the, on, on the rescue of, this, of the crop, of the extraction of the powder, and how to apply the powder to the, to the handcrafts. And it really, uh, it was an amazing opportunity because for me, well, before anything, I had to learn that traditional technique from El Salvador, I learned it from a Japanese teacher because oh. no here in El Salvador knew anymore how to dye with, wow. with powder. So it, it was an amazing experience because nothing was written also. We didn't have like a book on how to extract the powder from the plant to give you an example. So we have to interview the old um, uh, craftsman people or the, or the old men who the youngest one was 92 years old. Wow. I was like, please give me the information before anything. And quickly. <laughs> Sorry? And quickly, he's 92. Yeah. Wow. In incredible. And it, it was really, we really had an amazing time, like talking to people, which I love really to know the history. And they, they, in those times, they had like a magic uh, around them because they were the ones, they, they are called punteros, and they are the ones who know the exactly amount or when to extract the water from the leaves so you have a beautiful blue color. So all that experience was really nice and really put me in a, in a really close uh, view or I had, I experienced from the, by, by first hand, you know, how the rural communities lived here in El Salvador, because it's not the same that you see them from afar or from your car or from the city that you live, that, that really go into our rural communities and talking to the people and knowing how they live and how, how all the, the, traditional, the traditions are passed from one, one mother to another. And mm -hmm. it, it was, for me, it was really amazing. And, it, the more I knew from my traditional techniques, the more I loved El Salvador and the more I, I felt proud of my country and the, the, the things that really comes from from long time ago, you know. And, and in a way, I wanted through my work, that's what I try to do. I want to, to express all that proud of, of being Salvadorians and that we, we should value the, from from where we come from, you know, and and to to show, uh, yeah, what what we are, and with pride in a, in a way. So um, so indigo was my first passion, and okay. after years of the project, we were able to. Now we can say that it's an alive tradition again. You can go around and see that everyone is dying with indigo, and 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 that's a beautiful thing too. To have again in our country, and how amazing that must feel to know that you've been a part of the revitalization of that technique in your country. Yes, it's 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 really beautiful, and uh, also uh, the traditional technique of of weaving. We are 
Oh, a lot of the, our basketry or a lot of our traditional techniques are disappearing because the young people don't want to learn anymore the traditional techniques because they don't really they don't really can earn money from that, you know? That's why when we work with a community or we train in a traditional technique, we really pay them well for that handwork so that they really get interest. The young people, the only way to preserve the traditional technique is because you really can make a living out of it. Not because, ah, it's beautiful, let's conserve it because it's part of our tradition. Sure, there's an economic to it for sure. I was amazed at being in the jungle and watching that indigo technique and seeing how they were harvesting other colors from different plants in the jungle. Mm -hmm. And I believe that they had mentioned that Japanese professor yeah. who I think spent some time there and he actually walked away with a book about natural dyeing, using things in the jungle. And I, I don't know, it was just yeah. completely, it was very hot in the jungle, but it was very <laughs> fascinating though, for sure. So you uh, practice a lot of the natural dyeing techniques from other plants as well, don't you? Yes. After after getting involved with indigo, I, I, I felt in love with all the plants and the colors and the things that you can play around with and and. and and have colors from the from those then the natural leaves and seeds and fruits so uh, i i really uh, became like a i my special specialization was on that on natural dyes and i i actually uh, work with a japanese um also teacher who was here for a long period because the 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 indigo project what was a national project we were able to to bring the government to work with us and the, all the NGOs, uh, so the Japanese people were some were helping to develop this project, and and there was this Japanese teacher here, uh, a volunteer. It was a volunteer actually. It was a woman, and and we make a research on how to die with mango leaves, how to die wow. with. Cochinilla, how to die? You know, we have so many things that you can die. Uh, with natural things that you can die uh, here, uh, mm -hmm. it's 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 amazing. So for me, it was like playing, playing to cook with plants and obtaining beautiful colors. And now we have here now in Lula Mena, a long a lot of years later, I use those th that knowledge to dye, and we have a line of of products, especially kids' clothes and and clothes for for women. It died with natural plants. Are you thinking about writing a book someday? Because this is a lot of unique knowledge that you have. And as you've mentioned, the, a lot of these techniques are orally shared or hands-on training and not necessarily captured in, 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 in books. It will be beautiful, really. One of my <laughs> dreams is to one day to really... Uh, have like a really beautiful coffee table book made out of how was it? the plants where you, or plants, dying plants from El Salvador or something like that, you know, with the beautiful products at the same time. It will be beautiful to have that oh, because we don't should. have any formal books here or, or, or where you can really find the information. It's just mm -hmm. oral. Everything is oral. Yeah. I want to talk about one of my Look, I loved everything in your shop, but I walked into this room and I felt like I was transported to another planet. These things <laughs> called needles, Nidos. right? Oh, yes. So, mm. I, first of all, I had to kind of figure out what they were because yeah. they were amazing. That's just, at first glance, you think they're these beautiful pieces of art, but they have a hell of a lot more meaning to them. And you just want to touch every single one. Yeah. Well, yeah. you can't touch them. They, they told you don't touch them. I know. Did you touch them? I, I took Lula, a lot of pictures. Lula, we're sorry. I'm going to touch the needles. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just a lot of pictures. <laughs> so tell us about these amazing pieces of art. That was a very, very nice collection for me in, 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 a, in a personal way, you know. It was my first art collection and I use art as a tool of, of, of agent of social change also. That was the purpose, that, that to show that through art we also can use it to give 
uh, jobs and to 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 preserve tra- traditional techniques and to have um, these beautiful, amazing art pieces, but but with a meaning behind it. Uh, so for a year, I was able to produce, to design, and to to produce these eighteen pieces that are nests, um, hand woven with copper wire, with fish scales, with uh, leftovers of leather. Any, we, we have so many different uh, mat- upcycle, uh, mat- reused materials and, and, uh, hand- and, and traditional techniques involved in all these pieces, that it was beautiful. The, the process of creating them was a gift for me because I was able to work on them with other 30 women for a year, not, you know, working on that, no thinking about pricing or reproduction because they were <laughs> unique pieces, each of them. So for me, it was like, it's so beautiful just creating to create, to create something beautiful. And at the same time to, to, to help all this group, group of women that were 30 women that we were training and, and working and developing together. So. That was the result of, of this exhibition. It, they are 18 pieces made with love and joy. Mm-hmm. It, it, that's the thing. And, and the, the nests are chairs that they are art pieces, but you can you, you actually use them. And the concept is that I'm inviting you to sit on the nest, to get in touch with you, you know, and then mm-hmm. reburn from the nest. In a more yeah, they, they have a very cocoon-like <laughs> feel, so I can see that that would be a, a, yeah, I can see transformation happening as a result of spending time being cuddled by the nest and then <laughs> reflecting. And, and these aren't small. I mean, they're seven foot right. tall and, I don't know, two, three feet around. I mean, and the room was full. It, it, they were just astounding. I, you know, if I say it once, I say it a hundred times. Walking into Lulamena space, you are transported to this different place. Uh, it's a place of love and care, mm. beautiful aesthetic, unbelievable artisanal mm. design. You know, how she's managed to think about, you know, tradition and then technology and transformation, you know, taking all of those things, taking these, you know, these kind of traditional methods and really evolving processes to create these amazing things. I, I urge everyone to go. Is it lulamena.com? Yes. So please go to lulamena.com. Please buy her out of good so she can make so many more beautiful things. It's just, uh, you'll go and you'll look at, uh, I don't know, you keep changing the site and there's just more amazing stuff <laughs> and more amazing stuff. You clearly love what you do. It's just, oh, that's, it's incredible. That's the amazing thing, Brett. Um, I feel so blessed, you know, to be able to work in something that I love. I, I love my work and coming here and, the, and creating things. And at the same time, knowing that doing something that I really love, being able to impact in, impact the lives of other women and children, it, it, it's so fulfilling that it's, I just feel that I'm blessed. And probably that's what you feel when you come in here. You feel all this. Yes, we feel it. <laughs> that's great energy. So before we wrap today's conversation, I have one final question. Um, Post COVID, what do you see for your your next evolution or innovation or project? What are you brewing up? <laughs> What's coming down the road? <laughs> you know, I, I'm I'm always like looking the world in a positive way, so I'm always hopeful, and and that's the way I I see the future. It's like. Okay, we we are not able to sell a lot in our country anymore as we used to to sell here, but we can sell internationally. And and I think that post COVID, in a way, I don't know if you agree with me, guys, but we all as human beings are more like conscious of what we are consuming and why do why why we do the things that we do, 
And and I think that slowly that market is growing and that's our market. That's the market that we really are interested in. The people who really know are aware that by choosing something that by choosing or buying something that you want, uh, you can also impact the life of other people. You know, like small actions, daily actions can really impact the life of others. And so I'm 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 super hopeful of that. And I'm I having plans of working with more communities, more women, playing with more techniques and, and putting my my small action every day to do to do what I can the best way I can. Where we're here as your cheerleader squad and <laughs> voice to whoever's listening out there that please go to lulamina.com. Yeah. Um, support her. The stuff is amazing. You've you've had it. Uh, there have been people that have worn it in con, and they're uh, also, I guess, in Academy Awards. Academy Awards. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm telling you, it's it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, amazing I, I think your vision for the future is so uh, represents you so well, and also the needs of 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 where consumers are going. Everybody is, is wanting authenticity and connection. And I think you're, you're right on point with embracing that with, with some optimism. I, I love Lula that you started this journey as a mother thinking about how can I create a, a better future for other mothers out there. And what's clear to me is that you are, uh, you know, you're a mother in your family, you're a mother to art and innovation and, design and community and cultural change. I applaud you so much for that. We look forward to seeing what's next for you and to continue to collaborate with you as well. Um, mm -hmm. For anyone out there who wants to see uh, more of Lula Mena, of course, go to her website, but we will also have photos of uh, what we experienced and saw upon our visit to El Salvador uh, on our blog for the, for, for this uh for this podcast. So thank you so much for joining us today on this episode of Clothing Culture and make sure to subscribe to stay apprised of upcoming episodes. Thanks, Lula. Thank, thank you, you so much. <laughs> Bye.